Alrighty, it's Saturday, February 25th, and it's quarter to six in the morning, or 5.45, and it's time for Comments X. Uh, yesterday, uh, I, did, I had done a um, treatment on the state of modern physics uh, in response to a comment that uh, I had left... Uh, well, actually, I, I had left a uh, comment on a uh, videos page the, the, on on the state of modern physics. Someone had a comment on it, uh, it, it and they were they responded to my comment, and I wanting to know more about the state of modern physics. So I posted yesterday's video. And uh, looking back at it and looking at it yesterday, I realized that uh, more actually needs to be said. So this is part two. Um, as I have stated before, um, I am a physicist. I'm an actual physicist. Uh, I'm an explorer. Uh, my thesis that I had started off with 20 years ago was uh, quantum physics, uh, the quantum physics uh, random walk, and I decided to sort of test that idea out to see whether or not uh, from the random walk could you touch all areas uh, of academic study, and and, and this is and then go and then go beyond it into exploring the universe. Uh, so this is the, the and, and I've been doing this now for 20 years. I've made a significant amount of progress. Uh, the progress I've made so far is slowly being being pushed out onto the internet. You'll see this over the next couple of months. I'll be coming more and more visible on the internet. Just look at my you can look at the various different channels I have uh, down in the featured bar. I'll be adding a few more over the next couple of uh, days. Uh, as I get through all the bits and pieces to get them up and working. But on to the state uh, of modern physics. It's not that... And th this is something that needs to be understood. I have said this before, that we exist now in, this, in the, the modern state of physics in a state of an asymptotic answer. That means that no, it, no matter how much we've done or understood, the answer will never, the full answer will never be achieved because it's asymptotic. And this is sort of the, uh, the basis of a limit. The fundamentals of calculus is based on the concept of how do you deal with a, uh, an equation or, or mathematics where you can actually get to the number, it's asymptotic, but you can approach it. And uh, at what limit do you say in the limit uh, x equals so on and so forth? Uh, or does this thing just simply stay infinite? You know, that you just don't reach it. Uh, this is sort of where we are in physics. This concept of the limit in the fundamentals of calculus uh, matches up with the Heisenberg uncertainty pro, uh, principle. It, the Heisenberg uncertainty principle has been taken not only in, in large physics, like in, in the structures of galaxies and in um, uh, quantum physics, uh, the, micro, the, the subatomic particle, the particle physics, it's been demonstrated there. Uh, the the whole you know this is why you can never actually uh, pinpoint and where an electron is. What you can s do is you can limit your knowledge to a uh, to a position of electron to a particular cloud, and this is how if you look at the different orbits, the s, the p, uh, and all those. If you were familiar with uh, the quantum physics of the, the uh, structure of the you have the s orbital, you have the p orbital. Uh, then you have the pi orbital, then you have 
you have a variety of different orbitals as you move on up the number of electrons that are in there. And these orbitals are shaded in as uh, clouds. And it's not that, that, that the whole area is filled with electrons. It's just, there's one electron, but we don't know exactly where it is. We know it's in that cloud someplace. So uh, that's the uh, Heisenberg uncertainty principle that, that, that right there. Um, the Heisenberg uncertainty principle demonstrates itself in the Bowling Green liner, where they try to uh, produce the entire plane in terms of what is, you know, is all is the different effects the different parts with. Have in terms of uh, you know well, <sighs> they try to model the entire plane and build the entire plane within a supermassive computer system. But at the end of the day, when they began building the plane, they realized they had to go back and do some the old modeling where you build a physical mock-up in order to test out certain things because. The, the computer model, no matter how good it was, was still an approximation and not reality. So even uh, to this point in time now, uh, computer uh, modeling has not reached reality. So there's the Heisenberg, Heisenberg uncertainty principle there for you as well. And this sort of illustrates the point where physics is at. Is that yes, we've come a long way. Yes, we've got a lot of, uh, a lot of answers. But when you're pushing into the boundaries, there's still that so, there's so much that's not understood. That when you move into these extreme limits and trying to get up to and answer the question, well, why aren't we getting to these answers? Uh, then things start falling apart, and that's particularly what uh, you know. I don't know for other physicists, but from my perspective as a physicist, uh, my whole attraction to uh, this thing was the exploration. It was it was the unknown, you know. S you know, so you know, supposedly sailing out into the the, un the unknown ch chartered waters of physics, and this was for me uh, exploration of the universe, and it's still that. So, <sighs> seeing that there's an enormous amount that we don't know. Uh, is now coming to the point, and this is what happened with super strings, this is what's, happened, what's, what's going on now with the current state of physics, is that we've left off quantum mechanics and the general theory of relativity to deal with uh, what we know so far, but there's no bridge between general relativity and um, uh, quantum mechanics. And quantum mechanics is an extension of special, rel of special relativity. So. Uh, when you're dealing with subatomic particles and atomic particles, you're dealing with uh, quantum mechanics, even into when you're dealing with uh, uh, molecular structures, like in, in, you're, you're getting into uh, organic chemistry and uh, your macromolecular uh, uh, size particles. Uh, that's, that's still quantum mechanics. You're still in the quantum field there. Uh, But when they went to uh, even uh, in the general theory of relativity, when they went into black holes and then started began looking at the structures of galaxies, and this was sort of a lot of this stuff was really sort of uh, how should I put this? It was decimated. Because as we expected certain things and we began developing the, the Hubble Space Telescope, we started building larger and larger telescopes and with more, uh, with a wider view in the spectrum. What appeared in the telescope is not what we expected from theory. And this is where the problem is coming in now, is that we're seeing things that were not predicted by theory. And so the question is, well, okay, if we were seeing things that were not predicted by theory, uh, then what's going on? And so this is where the state of physics is now. The state of physics is, is now that we're seeing things that are not predicted by theory, 
theory doesn't seem to be adding up to it to where it, where it should be going or where they think it should be going so the question is now where do you go from here and this is where I had gotten back to uh, Richard Feynman uh, one of his comments was and it's still uh, uh, and it still applies today is that it doesn't matter how elegant your theory is you know the number of mathematics equations or how your equations look or whatever if it doesn't meet reality then the theory is no good it has to go back you have to go back to it and rework it and my question that it sort of popped into my mind a couple of years ago was I uh, is that when you're building or working on a mathematical equation you always start with some assumptions and because we're, we're building, using math, 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 mathematical models to build a model of the universe, let's assume our mathematics is correct. But what happens if there's a flaw in our assumptions? How does the flaw in our assumptions play out in the mathematics when our mathematics is correct? And the answer came to me about a year, about maybe a year after I answered the question, so I was sort of thinking about it for about a year, and realized that our errors in assumption would show up as anomaly. It would show up at, at points where reality does not meet theory. And so this is sort of where we are today in, in, in physics, where we're at a point in time where our assumptions on, on the models that we've got for physics don't meet reality and we have to go back to the board and sort of say well what's going on now alright I'll leave that for today and uh, I'll talk to you a bit later on tonight